Hello everyone. In this lecture today, I'm going to talk to you about measurement of bacterial growths. Bacterial growths can be measured by using direct as well as indirect methods. Direct measurement of bacterial growth includes plate count, filtration, the most probable number method, and direct microscopic count. Whereas indirect measurement of bacterial growth includes turbidity measurement, metabolic activity, and dry weight. In the direct method, we directly count the number of bacteria, whereas in indirect method, we do not count the number of bacteria. However, our measurement is based on other parameters such as turbidity, metabolic activity, and dry weight. Let's first talk about direct measurement of bacterial growth. The first method under direct measurement of bacterial growth is called plate count. It is the most frequently used method and the plate counts are reported as colony forming units or simply CFU. It is, it is important that only a limited number of colonies develop in a plate because too many colonies, if there are too many colonies present in the plate, they can cause inaccuracies in the count. So in order to ensure the colony count is within the range, a serial dilution is done. So plate can be prepared by using two different methods, poor plate method and also spread plate method. First, I'm going to talk about pour plate method. As the name suggests, in this method, we pour the media. Let's say that in the first step, what we do, we put the bacterial sample, we simply pipette the bacterial sample onto the petri dish in the first step. And in the next step, we pour the media in the plate. We pour the liquid media in the plate and in the Third step, what we do, we're, we, we swirl it to mix it. And then finally, we incubate it so that the colonies grow on the media. Okay? So this is called pour plate method. Why this is called pour plate method? Because here in this method, we pour the media on the plate. Okay? So the one of the major disadvantages of pour plate method is that heat sensitive microorganism will be damaged and hence they will not be able to form uh, the colonies in the plate. Okay, so heat sensitive microorganism will be damaged and therefore they will be unable to form colonies in the plate. This is one of the major disadvantages of poor plate method. So the next method to prepare the plate is called spread plate method. So in this method, what we do, we take the bacteria, okay, and we place it on the plate containing solidified agar medium is shown here. We take the bacteria, we pipette the bacteria on the plate and this plate already contains the solidified media. Okay, so then what we do in the next step, we spread uh, the, the bacteria with the help of spreader and finally we incubate the bacteria in the incubation chamber and let the bacteria to grow. We incubate the plate in the incubation chamber and let the bacteria to grow and we will see colonies after 12 to 16 hours, okay? So this is spread plate method. And this method can be used for heat sensitive bacteria. So then serial dilution, because serial dilution is used to determine the number of colony forming units per ml. So now I'm gonna talk about serial dilution. So what, what we do ex exactly in serial dilution? Let's say that we have our bacterial stock here. From this stock, we take 1 ml and we put 9 ml of the broth in all the tubes. First, we put 9 ml of the media in all the tubes. Then what we do in the first tube, this is tube number one. In tube number one, we take 1 ml of the bacteria from original stock and 9 ml of the broth. So the dilution is 1 to 10. And in tube number two, we take 1 ml from tube one and we already have 9 ml of the media, so the dilution is 1 to 100. In tube number 3, we take 1 ml from tube number 2, 1 ml from tube number 2, and we already have 9 ml of the media, so the dilution is 1 to 1000. In tube number 4, we take 1 ml from tube number 3, and we already have 9 ml of the media, so the dilution is 1 to 4. 1, one is to 10 to the power 4, sorry. And in tube number five, we take one ml of from the tube number four, 
9 ml of the media we already have hence the dilution is 1 is to 10,000 and in or 1 is to 10 to the power 5 let me say this and uh, not 10,000 and in tube number 6 we take 1 ml and then uh, from tube number 5 9 ml of the media we already have so the dilution is 1 is to 10 to the power 6 so after this what we do from each of these tubes we take 0 0.1 ml and we play it on these uh, for each of these tubes we play it separately okay for this tube here is the plate this tube here is the plate and so on so we take 0 0.1 ml from each tube and we play it on the plate and then we let um, let it grow in the chamber in the bacterial chamber so as you can see that in the first two dilutions it's hard to count the number of cells because number of colonies because there are too many colonies however in uh, in, in for the tube number three we can count the colonies there are 311 colonies for tube number four there are 27 colonies and for tube number five there are three colonies however for tube number six there are no colonies so now let's make the calculation for tube number three so how many number of colonies we see we see 311 colonies and what is the dilution corresponding to this colony this is 1 is to 10 to the power 3 that means this will be multiplied by 10 to the power 3 and hence how, what we will get we will get 3.11 into 10 to the power 5 colony forming units per ml so uh, the number of bacteria will be for 311 for this plate number 3 okay for this dilution that's 3.11 into 10 to the power 5 colony forming units per ml okay this is serial dilution the next method that is used for measurement of bacterial growth is called direct microscopic method okay direct microscopic method in this method we use a special slide this slide is called petrov hauser cell counter and uh, so basically in this method we simply add our sample here and then we count the number of cells in the big square okay number of cells in the big square and this big square has a 16 small square okay if we count the number of cells in this big square there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 we have 12 cells okay so there are 12 bacteria we, we can see in this big square then how to determine the number of the bacteria so basically the the volume of the fluid over the large square is 1 by 1.250 zeros of a millimeter so if the if it contains okay if the, if the if if our original stock contains 12 cells that means it will be 12 multiplied by this number and hence you we will get 100 1, 150 1 2 3 4 5 zeros yeah this will be the total number so basically we just need to multiply the number that we see in this big square by this number 1 comma um, 250 and three zeros okay so what we can do is that in, instead of counting only one big square we can count multiple big squares and we simply can average and then we can multiply that average by this particular number this is direct microscopic method so what are the advantages and disadvantages of direct microscopic method the disadvantages are the bacteria that move or simply motile bacteria they are difficult to count by this method in this method, dead, dead cells are also counted as, as the live one. And for this method, higher concentration of cells is required. Okay, about 10 million bacteria per millimeter. The major advantage of this method is that here we do not require incubation time. We can directly do the counting. Okay, so no incubation time is required. So then the next method for the that is used for measuring the bacterial growth is called filtration this method is suitable when the quantity of the bacteria present in the sample is very small for example as in lakes or in relatively pure uh, streams okay so bacteria can be counted by filtration method so how do we how do we do that we simply take the sample we filter okay we filter it through the membrane so basically this there is a membrane okay so then um, how we select the membrane the, the membrane is selected in such a way that the side it it only lets it only lets pass through 
the particles that are small, smaller than the size of the sieves of the membrane. Okay, size of the, for example, we can we can use 20 micron membrane. That means that anything that is smaller than 20 micron will pass through. Anything that is smaller than 20 micron will pass through. However, anything that is bigger than 20 micron will be retained on the membrane. So basically, on the membrane, let's say that this is a 20 micron membrane. That means the bacteria size is 100 micron or whatever. They will be retained on this membrane. And then what we do, then in the next step, we simply place this membrane on the agar plate and we place the plate in the incubator and the bacteria will grow and we'll start to see the colonies as shown here. And we simply count can count these colonies. Okay, so this is a filtration method. The another method that is used in measuring bacterial growth, which is also a direct method, is called most probable number method. This is a statistical estimating technique that is based on the fact that the greater the number of bacteria in a sample, the more dilution is needed to reduce the density uh, to the point at which no bacteria are left to grow in the tubes in a dilution series. This method is used when micro microbes being counted will not grow on a solid media. And in this method is only a statement that there is a 95% chance that bacterial population will fall within certain range. And most probable number is statistically the most probable number. For example, this method will tell, okay, the bacteria is falls between, let's say, 3 to 300. And, uh, and the, the most probable number, let's say, is 110. So this is a 95% chance that this is the lower limit, this is the uh, higher limit, and this is the most probable number. So this method will only give the estimation. So I'll describe now how this works. Let's say that we have here three sets of five different tubes. We have here set one, sorry, uh, yeah, five different tubes. We have here set one, set two, and set three. What do we do? We culture, we inoculate in, in this set 10 ml, 10 ml of the bacteria in this set, 1 ml of the bacteria and in this set 0.1 ml of the bacteria from our original sample then the number then we we determine the number of positive tubes here we have five tubes positive here we have three tubes positive here we have one tube positive so the order is 5 3 1 then what we do we check in the most probable number table okay this table has combination of positives most probable number index per 100 ml and 95% confidence limits lower and upper. Because our series is 531, then we have to look for a combination of positive here. This is 531. And as you can see that most probable number index per 100 ml is 110. That means that 110 is the most probable number of the bacteria. And the lower limit is 40 and higher limit is 300. Okay, so basically if we look up in this combination table, we find that most probable number index per 100 ml is 110. Statistically, this means that 95% of the sample that give this result contain 40 to 300 bacteria with 110 being the most probable number. Okay. Now that I talked about direct measurement of bacterial growth, now I'm going to talk about indirect measurement of bacterial growths. In this method, we do not directly count the number of bacteria. Rather, we rely on other parameters such as turbidity, metabolic activity, and dry weight to determine the number of the bacteria. So, turbidity measurement. So, the turbidity measurement instrument that is used to measure the turbidity is called spectrophotometer. So, what, what exactly is it? Okay, we take the bacteria, okay, we take the sample in a cubit and we just place the sample in the cubit, right? And we have here light source. We place the cubit here, as shown here. And then uh, we, we let the light to pass through. If it is blank, all the lights will be detected by our detector. But if it contains some bacteria, so that means that not all light will reach to the detector, okay? So only few light uh, will reach to the detector, okay? So this is turbidity measurement. So basically, what is turbidity measurement? In a spectrophotometer, a beam of light is transmitted through a bacterial suspension to a light sensitive detector. As the bacterial number increases, less light will reach the detector. If the bacterial number is high, less light will reach the detector. If the bacterial number is low, more light will reach the detector. This change of light will register on the instrument scale as the percentage of transmission. Uh, as printed on instrument scale is a logarithmic expression called absorbance. This is called absorbance. Simply, it's also called 
absorbance measurement or optical density measurements okay so simple method we have the light source right we have the light source we have bacteria here and suspension and the light passes through it yeah and here we have the detector if there is a more number of bacteria few light will reach the detector if there is less number of bacteria more light will reach the detector okay so this method is called turbidity measurement higher the turbidity uh, so higher higher, uh, higher the number of bacteria less light will be detected by the detector uh, lower the number of bacteria more light will be uh, will reach the detector okay so the disadvantage is that this method cannot be used for small number of bacteria so we need to have more than a million cells per milliliter uh, for the turbidity to be visible about 10 million to 100 million cells per milliliter are needed to make a suspension turbid enough to read on a spectrophotometer okay the device that is used for measuring turbidity is called spectrophotometer. Now the next method that is used to uh, measure the bacterial growth is called metabolic activity. So basically in this method, uh, this method assumes that the amount of certain metabolic products such as acid or the carbon dioxide is in direct proportion to the number of bacteria present. Okay, For example, we don't measure the number of bacteria, rather we measure carbon dioxide or the acid released Okay, uh, by the bacteria. So the higher, the, 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 the larger the number, larger the uh, certain metabolic product, for example, larger the number of carbon dioxide, larger the amount of carbon dioxide, sorry, the more will be the number of bacteria. Smaller the amount of carbon dioxide, less will be the number of bacteria. Similarly, um, larger the amount of acid, more will be the number of bacteria. Smaller the amount of acid, uh, less will be the number of bacteria. So this, that means that the amount of certain metabolic product is in direct proportion to the number of bacteria present a practical application of metabolic test is the microbiological assay in which acid production is used to determine the amount of vitamins okay so finally the dry weight is another indirect measurement of bacterial growth for filamentous bacteria and moles the usual measuring methods are less satisfactory in this procedure the fungus is removed from the growth medium and filtered to remove the extraneous material and dry it we have to dry in a desiccator and then we have to weigh okay for the bacteria we also apply the same method so basically higher the weight okay higher the dry weight more the number of bacteria lower the dry weight less the number of bacteria this is the indirect measurement of bacterial growth